with birth mom and I don't know if they got her consent or not, but she's in a very exposing position. Y'all have been in comments all day making of yourself trying to protect the ego of this man. Yes, I'm talking about the Karen. That baby is actually in real danger. Go back and watch the entire video that I just stitched. It is very, very important and he has receipts for everything that he is saying. So anybody else coming in my comments trying to cape up for that man because you can't stand the fact that people are criticizing a white man, your comments are completely invalidated from here out. Hey beautiful people, how you are doing today? It's your girl Destiny here and welcome back to my channel. How you are doing? Hope you guys are doing great. So this video is the part two video I posted previously of the white gay man who adopted a black baby and was asking the black community, black TikTok to help with the baby's hair and how is it going to take care of the baby's hair. But that has struck a bigger conversation. It is a viral video that has struck a bigger conversation of interracial adoption and all that. So a whole lot of questions were raised about this video because some people were asking how did this white gay man have the assets to adopt a child to adopt a black child and don't even have an idea of how to take care of this child or even had done the research of taking care of this child a whole lot people have a whole lot of questions but in this video a brother decided to come and do a deep dive and research on everything this brother went on to do research of how this um gay couple decided to be in the room where the biological mother was having this child and was filming everything, how they were taking the baby out, like literally just using the baby as props. It went on to just really break down all those, like a whole lot of the question, how they were able to have access to this child. And the crazy thing was that he eventually found out that the, both co the couple, they both have criminal records and they both have drug related even though they are clean now for about 10 years they have drug related records which just even make the whole conversation really messy and all that and also he eventually got answers to a lot of these questions which we're going to get into okay so let's go get into the video then we'll come back and talk more i stayed up majority of the night thinking about how i would make this video so i'm going to preface with i'm going to do my best to be trauma informed I'm going to do my best to be child and family centered and I'm going to do my best not to, I really don't want to shame anyone about addiction or criminal history. Because as y'all see, my PFP is my mugshot of when I was human trafficked. And so I do understand the criminal system and how it can affect people. So let's go. As you guys know, since yesterday, I've been covering the story of the white adoptive father with the black daughter and he has black talk for help. So... We, I've already made videos about like him deleting the videos, there's such and everything else, right? My team and I did some research yesterday on his public platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and TikTok, and there was a lot of troubling things. Off the bat, the first thing I found troubling is that he and his partner were in the room when the delivery was being done, uh, taking photos and videos of this birth mom, and I don't know if they got her consent or not, but she's in very exposing positions, uh, and any mother would know, like when they're giving birth, they don't want to be in those type of photos and positions, especially on adoptive parents' platforms. And like I explained yesterday, the immediate skin to skin wound wet is an issue and it causes maternal separation trauma. But after looking through his social media, there are so many red flags. The second red flag will be chokeable items, choking hazards. He's placed baby rings, as you see here on the baby. There are also multiple videos of her wearing cardigans with small buttons uh, that she should not be wearing. And the most concerning video or photo that I saw was the baby in their rocker, unsecured, um, sitting neck to chest. The reason they should never be in that position is because they could die from something called positional asphyxiation. Literally, they, they could suffocate because a baby's wind tunnel, windpipe, is the size of a flexi straw. And if it's bent, imagine a flexi straw being bent, there's nothing that can get through that straw. So if a baby's neck is to their chest, there's no way that their airway is actually correct and the baby is struggling to breathe. Another concerning thing I saw on his profile was that days that the, after the baby was born, he was had this baby outside doing public events. Uh, and right now with COVID making its way back up at RSV, we should really be protecting the most vulnerable, which are infants and old people. But to take it a step further and to place this baby on public items outside that are three to four feet in the air and to take steps back to take a photo, that is child endangerment if you ask me, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Cause at any moment that baby could roll and we don't know what type of germs are on these surfaces. 
There's also photos of the baby improperly placed in car seats with large jackets that baby should not be placed in car seats with, as well as the baby being swaddled in a rocker unsecure with a dog right next to the buttons to operate the rocker. But my number one biggest concern is how they legally adopted this child. In his original video, he said that the child was placed with him, which insinuated that this was a foster care situation. After my research, it's not looking like a foster care situation. In fact, I, will, I would pay a whole month's salary to say that this is not a foster care situation. In my opinion, this is a private adoption um, that no agency was involved in. And if there was an agency, this agency was corrupt. Why do I say this? This is the part where I'm trying to be the most sensitive. After looking on Will's page, you will learn that he is a 10 year recovering addict from intravenous use, uh, which is fantastic. Recovery is a lifelong process. I work with parents uh, who are actively in recovery and people with addictions can be great parents, especially if they have resources and they have a community. But just like a lot of people who struggle with addiction, there usually comes a criminal history. And unfortunately on Will's page, on his Facebook page, he posted this photo, um, showing girl how proud of he was of his growth which you know we are all proud of if you know anything about addiction if you know anything about the criminal justice system if you can get yourself out of those two things and make a great life for yourself that is amazing so my question is how did a convicted felon do a legal adoption in the state of texas where you're not allowed to be a convicted felon and adopt in the state of texas well i believe that some of these policies are unfair absolutely um you know i believe like i said felons can make their lives better um, they can be rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. People who struggle with addiction can get better and become amazing parents. But that's not the policy. The policy says no. And my biggest issue with this is whenever I talk about adoption, people say, well, the parents, the birth parents were just crazy and convicts. So why do they deserve to raise their children? My question is, we know that children are removed because parents struggle with addictions. We also know that children are removed because parents are convicted felons. So how did we allow an adoptive parent who's a convicted felon in a recovery, a recovering addict, how do we allow them to adopt a child that they clearly didn't do any research on? On top of all the other red flags. In 2024, I'm staying child and family centered. And the only thing I'm concerned about is the safety of the child. So Will, I'm asking you, what agency did you go through? And did they do a background check? And if they did, how were you approved? Let me know and I'll shine your light. So after the brother posted that video, it got, I think he did a live and Will decided to join the live and he asked him a couple of questions. So the brother came back to do like a real cap of some of the questions, like how did he get the child adopted and everything. Like he literally asked him those hard questions that everybody's inching on how and why things are and he to confirm if it was an addict and even a criminal or an offender and all that so anyway guys let's go check out the response and the recap of that life then we'll come back and talk more hey light shiners so this video is going to be a recap of my investigation with zoe and her adoptive fathers i did get to speak to will uh, he was the adoptive father who was brushing the hair i spoke to him yesterday for about an hour on my live and i did get confirmation of all of my questions that i had on my previous video that you guys just watched so i'm going to go over those facts um, i'm also going to answer some of the questions of how did this all even happen so let's start with the facts. The first fact that I, as an adoptee and an adoptee advocate, want to make very clear that this was a legal private adoption. It is very unethical, but they did it the legal way. And because there isn't much governmental oversight, really no oversight with private adoption, as long as you have the money, you can get your product, which are babies. So let's start with the facts. The first fact is Will and his husband are both convicted felons. That's just the fact of the matter. I spoke to Will about this yesterday, but like I said in my previous video, most people who struggle with addiction also co that coincides with a laundry list of convictions. And unfortunately, between him and his husband, there's over a hundred charges, a hundred charges, many of them felony charges, not all convictions, because I know convictions and charges are different, but they both have been convicted with felonies in the state of Texas. Now, out of all of those convictions and charges, None of them were child abuse related. None of them were sex crime related. But if we're sticking to the facts, there were violent felonies on there. And there are also many felonies on there. To be clear, we're just dealing with the facts. Mm. The second fact of this case is both of the adoptive fathers are recovering addicts, but they are both have at least 10 years under their belt, okay? Um, so that's just a fact. 
and we support people who struggle with addiction. Um, and we know that rehabilitation can happen, um, but that's just the facts. Once again, we just cover the facts here. The third fact of the matter is where did the Zoe come from? And this is the most upsetting. Zoe's mother is a 23 year old former foster youth who already has three prior children, two in her, her care, one, uh, I believe, is with a family member or a friend. I don't know if the third one got adopted out. I believe it's with a family member or a friend. Um, this is something we see from foster youth all the time. More than 75% of women who will grow up in foster care system will be pregnant by the age of 19. And this is a statistic that I talk about regularly. So for the people saying, well, she just gave up her baby. This was a foster youth who was also failed by the system, right? And the system then convinced her to give up her child. It's generational trauma, y'all. And the last fact that I wanna share before we get to answering some of the most common questions I saw was, was this done legally? And unfortunately, yes. So let's get to the questions. Now, I know y'all wondering right now, how the f did he get approved for adoption? Well, after speaking to Will yesterday, he did tell me that he and his husband uh, both knew pretty much that they couldn't go through the foster care or the public adoption systems because foster care and the public adoption systems, they do have policies and procedures that prevent felons and people with previous drug addictions from being foster parents or adoptive parents through the public foster care system or public adoption. Now, the difference between public adoption and private adoption is public adoption has governmental oversight. Private adoption does not. Private adoption is just a private industry, a private adoption uh, company, or a private adoption attorney. In this case, Will and his husband used a private adoption attorney who then hired an adoption social worker to look for a baby to adopt. Most of these babies that they look for to adopt are either in y'all's community, your churches, or sometimes they will go to private adoption agencies and pay a fee for some of their reference referrals. Yeah, you heard that right. Adoption agencies, and you guys have seen the ads. Can you not take care of your baby? Do you want to offer your baby a better life? That's not foster care advertising to you. Those are private adoption agencies who then sell that baby to the highest bidder, whether that be an adoptive parent or a baby broker. They're called baby brokers. Um, this attorney was a baby broker, uh, and they just try to find their clients' babies. Well, Carlos, I thought that in the state of Texas, you said that you couldn't adopt and be a felon. I did, and you can't. Unless you go through a private adoption and you use a baby broker, because if you use a baby broker, that baby broker is the one who approves you, not the government. Remember, I said that private adoption has no governmental oversight. So meaning that if the baby broker just wants your money, right, they can just ignore your background, which many do. All they have to do is find a parent who they can coerce to give up that child, have that parent sign over for adoption, and then wait six to 12 months after the baby was born and then finalize the adoption. No background check. Now, Will did say that he and his husband did go through a home study and get, did go through a background check. But once again, these home studies and background checks are approved by the baby attorney, the adoption attorney or the baby broker. Um, so, of course, they don't really, as long as you got the money, they don't really care and they will approve you. Oh, right. The last fact of this of this case is um, that I forgot to mention. Will has so far spent seven thousand dollars. He's probably going to spend anywhere between three to five more thousand dollars to um, get this adoption finalized. Myself and most other adoptees make content on how we can stop the private adoption system and why we are anti-adoption. You guys will ask us, why are you anti-adoption? Why are you anti-adoption? Because of cases just like this. This is a private adoption that allowed two convicted felons with violent charges to get their hands on a child. Now, they might be good people now, but we can't guarantee that for all people. And if we allow one set of felons to adopt a child, we open the door for all felons to adopt a child, right? And I know some felons can be good people, but a lot aren't, okay? I will be making more videos about how we can, as a black community, protect our children. I believe that we need to create something like ICWA, which is the Indigenous Child Welfare Act, right? That Native children can only go to Native families. I believe that that should apply for black children, Latino children, and Chinese children, all races of children. Uh, we should be placed with our culture first. So in closing, he did nothing illegal. It's unethical, but it's completely legal in the private adoption uh, world. Uh, everybody who's upset and asking what can we do, we can call Congress, we can call our state representatives, and we can get pissed off about this is allowed to happen in our country. This is human trafficking. This is a slavery. Adoption is slavery, especially private adoption. Mm -hmm. And for all the people saying call CPS, call CPS, call CPS, unfortunately, he hasn't committed any, he, he hasn't broken any laws. So you're going to waste your time calling CPS. And when, when people are saying, let's save this baby, Zoe 
at least he has addressed. He has addressed everything on the live. He said he's going to learn and do better. And he's going to actually uh, listen to adoptees, take some more ado uh, adoptive parent courses. So he said that he's an acknowledged what he has done and he's willing to learn and make a change. So there's hope for Zoe. What who don't have hope are the thousands of other adoptees that are adopted legally through private adoptions as transracial adoptees, as black babies. They're the ones who need our help because not all of their parents are gonna hop on TikTok and expose us. They're gonna have us in their home silently and no one will know, just like what happened to me. So if this case angered you at all, that you really need to get activated in the adoption reform and help us reform adoption so this can stop happening and we make more policies to protect children, especially the most marginalized children. Always shine your light. Wow. Wow. Please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Love to know what you think about this conversation down in the comment section, but please keep it respectful. You're on this channel, we're allowed to disagree, but we do it in a respectful way. So go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Feel free, okay? But let's just be respectful. Um, I really want to give it out to this brother. Like, he did such an amazing job. I'm going to leave his handle down in the description box. Please, guys, just go to his page to show him love. Like, please... No, but if you don't like anything he said or you don't like his vibe, please just scroll. Don't even go there. Forget that I even put it there, please. That was one of the reasons I don't put people's handle because of controversial things. But what he's saying, I feel like he has a lot of more information about the adoption, the adoption laws, the process, adoptees and all that, their experience and all that. So if something you're interested, you can go check out his page. I just feel like he has more information because I actually learned a lot watching his video and the question he was asking like i learned so much so that is why why i am dropping his handle please guys if you don't like it just go i, I know i have a great a community here where we're very respectful okay but just for the very few that could just go cuckoo please hmm? let's just scrum pass so i really like what he said about how it it takes just more than just this case of the uh, Zoe to do this because this is a rooted issue. And it's so interesting how the American adoption system works, but I feel like it's almost like that too in Nigeria because I did a couple of research on adoption in Nigeria, which is really tedious, I know that. But you also have family members here that will just give away their child to another distance relative, and then this child are being used as housemates and being maltreated and all that. This is even not interracial adoption, but even physically. So I feel like these are things that laws generally in the world that should be put in place to protect children. And people should be very, very intentional about this. Because I am of the opinion that you don't have, like, when we talk about, oh, child-free, oh, you don't want... I just feel like if you really feel like you're a good person and you can raise a child, you can raise a good human being, and, like, maybe you don't even want to give birth, which I am not, like, we have enough people already in the world already, so you can just go and adopt a child that needs that love and that raising, okay? So I really do like the work this brother is doing. I, like, I do appreciate it a lot, and him talking about how the biological mother of zoe the baby girl was from the system to was a foster child like i just feel like this is why i keep saying here on this channel is that these type of decisions will make just end up being like a ripple effect that just keep going on going on until we take a stop until we stop and start doing the healing and stop having children and start doing the healing and heal our trauma, heal all sorts so that we can be in a position to raise better human beings and even be better human beings as a whole. But I feel like the system, yeah, so we'll keep talking about how the system is not working, how the system has failed. But the people that run the system are also humans that, are, that don't have empathy, that don't have love, that are not even thinking of the well-being of these children, that just throw them down into the system and all that. We need to start raising good human beings because I feel like by the time we start raising good human beings, you start raising a society that people are very cautious, people are very intentional about what they do and how they treat their fellow human beings. And like he said, this is something that will go on repeatedly and unnoticed because those parents will not come online and post the baby. We know of this one, we're discussing this one because he decided to post his ignorance. But can we talk about how some white people, which I've seen, 
that and we know that some white people they usually come to africa to adopt black babies and i feel like some of them li literally s come with that savior syndrome they feel like they are helping they are saving a black being a black human being by taking that person in and as a content creator and and for me is that if you know you have a white you're a white person you have a white family that wants to adopt an outside like please 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 let them like have the conversation with them like let them ask them what they are doing why they are doing it because some of them are literally just using it as props in their life just to boost their ego there was one time that a creator here on youtube decided to adopt a child from one of the asia i think chinese or some one of this asia country and after they used this child to create content and this child has i think autism here on youtube they gave back the child to the sister they went to drop the child in the foster like so please guys some people still come and do the whole foreign adoption not just the private adoption but even the foreign adoption which there was a time i actually look i was actually looking into it it's really crazy so please guys let's really stop and try to be good human being raise good human being so that we can have a better society and also stand for laws and that protect children and women and empower women anyway guys go ahead down in the comment section and share your thoughts love to know what you think about this conversation down in the comment section but please keep it respectful here on this channel we're allowed to disagree but we do it in a respectful way so go ahead and share your thoughts give the video a thumbs up smash the like button because this helps youtube to push up my content for more people to see and that will be you supporting your girl and this channel so go ahead and do all the stuff subscribe if you haven't subscribed and i'll see you guys in my next video Deuces.